Hey, welcome to another series of Inspirational Focus with Deacon Terry Acox, in which we're going to continue our discussion about sacraments, and this time we're going to be discussing confirmation. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to Inspirational Focus. Uh, today we're talking with uh, Deacon Terry Acox. Uh, Terry, Deacon Terry, has been a permanent deacon with the Roman Catholic Church for at least six years. And um, he, he services or service uh, or serves, I, sure I should that. say. Yeah, um, seven different churches, Catholic churches in the Sciata County area. And Terry uh, is very, very knowledgeable in many aspects. To become a permanent deacon, you go through a number of different years in theological studies. So, Terry, welcome again. Well, thank you for having me. And, and you know, last time we, we talked a little bit about the sacrament of baptism, and we talked about sacraments and the the gifts that God gives us and the inspirations through the sacraments that that profess our faith right. and, and we know that that in baptism it's one of those initial rites it's part of the three sacraments that are called the sacraments of initiation ah very good uh, the other two being confirmation which we will discuss today and the reception of Holy Eucharist oh okay all right hey and uh, you had, had mentioned that there are seven different um, sacraments. Yes. And that the first three are the initiation. You know, the Basically, baptism. kind of an initiation. Okay. All organizations, if you will, have some sort of initiation right. All your fraternal organizations, such as the Elks and the Moose and, and uh, the Eagles or whatever, they will have an initiation I right see. that people the mem people who want to become members have to go through to become full members of that particular organization I see, I see. and so usually at baptism and usually it's at the very beginning of a person's life that's the Catholic Church does baptize infants uh, and also as adults when you come into the church oh, okay. as an adult you get and if you've not been previously baptized okay. you will be baptized when you come in as an adult so so the first first 11 12 13 years that's where the the uh, uh, better understanding the the teaching that goes into uh, usually children that were baptized early etc uh, and that's why there were so many different Catholic grade schools. Right. Was to help that formation. To of help the formation and to teach them part of the faith that they've been baptized oh, I into. See. I see. And then when when they came to being confirmed, uh, they were they were accepted then as sort of an individual that had all the basic understanding. Of of the Catholic Church, somewhat. Somewhat. Uh, some of the they understand the basics of the of the Catholic faith. When you're confirmed, uh, it is a, basically a sign of maturity in the Catholic faith oh, I see. Uh, that you've been trained in certain aspects through your religious education, oh, I either see. either in a Catholic school or in a parish based education, um, like. They call it PSR now. It's uh, Parish School of Religion. No, oh, okay. Um, you can receive your religious education through that. And then, when you reach typically the age of 13, 12, 13, 14, then you are confirmed, and it is a basically a sign of maturity in the Catholic faith that you have certain levels I see. of religious background. <laughs> Okay, and you know we, the uh, uh, Roman Catholic Church preaches, teaches, not preaches, teaches about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, and the Holy Spirit instills upon those uh, being confirmed extra. Uh, 
extra well, spiritual. When when you were baptized, the Holy Spirit is called down upon you okay. and is instilled in you. Okay. Then when you receive confirmation, it's a strengthening ah, okay. of that spirit, that oh, okay. Holy Spirit right. that you've received. Okay. Uh, you will receive that strengthening through the prayers of confirmation and through the the form of confirmation which is the assigning of the with the sacred chrism on your forehead and the sign of a cross and by the laying of hands I see. by the, on on your head by the uh, the bishop who is the ordinary minister of, of confirmation. Oh, okay, all right. Now, I, I've heard some people say that once you're confirmed, you no longer need education. That is not Religious correct. Religious education. Oh, okay. uh, it's I would somewhat equate it to high school, for example. If you if people graduate from high school. Even if they don't go on to college, they might enter the workforce or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Uh, you don't stop learning at that point in time. I see. So if once you're confirmed uh, and you receive the additional graces with that sacrament, you don't start stop learning about your faith at any point in time. Okay. Right. So you just continue to grow in your faith. I as see. you get older. I see. Now, it's my understanding that the the uh, Roman Catholic Church, uh, that is one of their uh, initial sacraments, and also some of the other Christian faiths, like the Anglicans and, you know, a few others also yeah. confirm. Yes. Uh, it, it, for, for older individuals who have not gone through, maybe they grew up in a, a different denomination and then they came to the Catholic Church, do they sort of miss the, the, uh, the sacrament of confirmation then? Uh, no. If, let's say an adult coming through uh, the RCI program, uh, if they have not been baptized, they will be baptized. Okay. But if they were pre previously baptized in another faith using the f proper, the form in the proper manner, they don't get rebaptized. Oh, okay. uh, their baptism okay. is, is valid. Hmm. But in the case of confirmation, uh, since the bishop is the ordinary minister uh, of confirmation, then if they've been say confirmed, if you will, in another faith, the Catholic Church does not recognize that because the minister of confirmation has, is not in communion with the Pope. I see, I see. Okay, so so it's a, uh, the hierarchy, you know, the bishop is a representative of the Pope. Uh, the bishop, the bishop is, well, the Pope is merely a bishop. Right. All right. He, but he is, the, the term is the first among equals. Oh, okay. Um, but all bishops have to be in communion with the Pope. I see. All Roman Catholic bishops have to be in communion with the Pope in order to be, to validly do their I see. job. I see. You, you, know, you know, Terry, um, I, I saw or, or read uh, an interesting thing that in the medieval times, the baptistry was separate from the church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe you were the one that, that brought that up because, um, you know, the, the individual that is not a member of the Catholic Church, uh, it is uh, required that they be baptized so that way they can enjoy uh, they can join in the celebration in, in the celebration and so they did not want the baptistry to be in in the, the right but with confirmation those individuals have already been baptized yes um, so the, the the question comes in since they have not had the same educational for uh, format that Traditionally, uh, my, myself, you know, where you had it through uh, parochial school, etc. How do they get their basic understanding? Is there a 
There is a program called RCIA, okay. um, Right of Christian Initiation oh, okay. for Adults. And typically, it, it will begin in the fall of the year, September, uh -huh. uh, somewhere along that time frame, and continue up until the Easter Vigil. I see. You, the catechumens, as they're called, will come into the Catholic Church into a, a series of meetings stretching over that period of time, usually on a weekly basis. And at this this is the point where they're taught the basic fundamentals of the Catholic Church I see. and the Catholic faith. I see. Okay, so so in essence, uh, um, we, we assume that, that individuals have a somewhat of a basic understanding of about the Catholic Church and about other religions, but primarily about Christian faith. Well, and so yes, the, about I, the Christian RCIA faith. sort of helps solidify that understanding. For adults. For adults. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, and, and within the RCIA, you'll, they, the adults will learn things like uh, about the Holy Trinity, what I the see. Catholic belief is on the Holy Trinity. The Father, Son, and the Father, the Holy Son, Spirit. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. They will learn things about marriage. For, for example, uh, if they have been previously married, uh, then they must, <clears throat> and divorced, then they must go through an annulment process because the Catholic Church recognizes that marriage is, is a lifelong commitment. Right. And if that has changed to a legal uh, process, process yeah. huh. then you just sacramentally still married to your first spouse. Oh, okay. Unless it would, that marriage can deem, be deemed as valid, uh, as not valid, I'm huh. sorry. Yeah, it, it is interesting because when we get into that sacrament, I've got a lot of questions uh, because, you know, we, as an adult, we meet not only Catholics, we also meet uh, those individuals of other faiths mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, and those other faiths, et cetera, they have their sets of, of rules, uh, if you will. Yeah, yeah, rules. Uh, so when we get into that, I, no. just be prepared. I got okay. lots of questions uh, that I wish to ask. Mm. Uh, but uh, on, on the confirmation, um, what really happens to the individual? Do they feel anything, you know? Well, that will depend on the individual. Some individuals, Let's talk about the typical confirm okay. confirmande, which is a, a 13, 14-year-old student uh, individual. They may feel a, I don't know what you would call it, a feeling, if you will, a okay. high feeling as a result of the confirmation. Others may not. Okay. Uh, that will, like I said, that will depend on the individual. but. Once you go through the confirmation, once you are confirmed, this impl imparts onto you a strengthening of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, like all the sacraments, if you are not prone to receive this in your soul, then the effect will be less. Okay. And if, but if you are more apt to receive the spirit, the graces that you receive, then the effect will be more. Okay. A lot of depends on the individual. Uh, so uh, is, is confirmation a requirement to get into heaven? No. Confirmation is not required for salvation. Oh, okay. Right. It will be a help oh, okay. towards salvation because okay. you are strengthened by the Holy Spirit I see. and this gives you strength, more strength to f I see. to fight against the sins and the temptations that you are I see. Uh, I see. faced with. Oh, okay. Uh, now in the Jewish faith, um, you know, when, when boys hit the age of 13 or 14, they go through a ceremony. I, I forget what the ceremony is called. I, um, I don't know either. But, but is that similar? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know what that ceremony is, so I can't answer that question. Uh, bar mitzvah, I think. Bar mitzvah, is, yeah. I, I think it's yeah. term, but I don't know what it yeah. entails. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, why should people get confirmed? 
you know, why, why should it be a consideration <laughs> for all Catholics? Because it helps you to fight against the temptations that you will face oh, in okay. life. You, we're constantly bombarded with temptations through our life. Uh, and if we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, those graces within our souls, then we are more tempted to fight against, the, we are more better able to fight against those temptations. Okay. All right, and in those particular temptations, um, let, let's suppose that we succumb to them. Could I come to you and say, "Hey, Terry, you know, please forgive me"? Uh, no. Okay. If if you do something against me, okay, say you hit me. All right. For example, you can come to me and say, "Forgive me, I didn't mean to hit you." I, say, I see. And I can say, "Yes, that's fine. It's okay." Okay. But as far as the actual sin of hitting somebody with no provocation, okay. then you have to go through what is called reconciliation, I which see. is another sacrament. Okay, all right. To, to be absolved of that to be, sin. To be forgiven by God of oh, that particular sin. I see. Okay. And when, when did confirmation come, come about? Was that part of the original uh, precept of, of Christ when he talked about? Uh, confirmation has been part of the Catholic faith probably since about the third century, third beginning century. about the third oh, okay. century, but really came into common practice about the fifth century oh, after okay. Christ. But there were indications before that uh, in, if you look at the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit comes down upon many individuals at various times. For example, Noah at the time of the flood. He received a visit from the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove to tell him that the, the earth was now ready oh, for okay. inhabitation. Yeah. So it's it's been there, but not called confirmation, if oh, you I will. See. I see. So during the Pentecostal season, and this is uh, when the the uh, apostles have <clears throat> received that extra grace, extra grace from God, that would, that would be similar to what confirmation would yeah, you think? Yeah, that is, if you will, it could be considered the confirmation for the apostles okay. at Pentecost, which is 40 days after Easter. I see. That's when the Holy Spirit came to the apostles, giving them the strength and courage to go out, out into the public and proclaim the Word of God. Oh, I see. And that's basically what we receive as confirmation. When we okay. receive confirmation, we see we receive the strength of the Holy Spirit to go out into the public to proclaim the Word of God. I see. I see. You, you know, I also heard. Uh, um, I, I think when I was growing up, I, I was in eighth grade or ninth grade. I, I somewhere around there that. Uh, the nuns, the, the teacher said that we would become soldiers of Christ. Yes. And I never understood that. What did they mean by soldiers of Christ? When you become a soldier of Christ, it's nowadays we would consider that almost a a metaphor, uh, if you okay. will. All right. uh, okay. in your, back in the early days of the church, um, especially during the times of persecution, it, it meant more. I see. But nowadays, you become a soldier for Christ in that you receive the grace from the Holy Spirit uh, that enables you to fight temptations, to I proclaim see. the word, word of God in your thoughts, in your words, your actions, your deeds, and so forth. So what, what you're saying is that being an evangelical. Evangelical? Yes. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> evangelical. Uh, it's just not going out and proclaiming, hey, everyone, let's look at the Roman Catholic Church. No. It, it has to do with a lot more than that. It has to do with a lot more than that. Being a good person does not, or a, a religion, and even a religious person, does not mean getting up on the soapbox on the, on the street corner and proclaiming the oh. gospel. Okay. Okay. You live the gospel in your life through your actions. Um, 
It might be, you know, you get to a, a door of a store and you open the door and there's uh, somebody coming in right before, right after you, you mm -hmm. hold the door open for them. Uh, it might be, you know, at least that simple or it could even be to the, to the point where you give up your life for the faith. I mean, there's a whole spectrum of, of things that you are done to live a good moral life. Like I said, from opening the door for somebody to even dying for the faith. I see, I see. So, so in other words, what, what, I, what I think I hear is, you know, it's all right to, to proclaim that you are a Roman Catholic. Right. It's all, all right to proclaim, you know, you can join us. But when we really live our faith, that's when we really show off our faith. Is that correct? When you live your faith, that's when people see how you live. I see. And see what you do. Then they say, that person has something special. And I want to be like that person. Huh. Very good. Very good. Uh, and, you know, the Christian faith is primarily about love. Yes. Uh, and, you know, when, when uh, Jesus was asked, what is the greatest of all, all the uh, commandments? Of the commandments? To love your God, love your God with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And the second is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. That's right. And, and um, you know, when you're talking about Christian faith, it's, you know, that can be difficult. It is very difficult at times, especially if you, I don't like to say it this way, if you don't like that person, yeah. uh, th they've done something to you, or it just may be a personality conflict yeah. or something yeah. of that nature. And it's hard to say that, yeah, I love this person, you know. Yeah. Uh, but when, when a lot of people look at love as, as, sort, as an emotion, but when we say we have to love our neighbors ourself, we're not saying with an emotional love. Oh, okay. what, we, what we're saying is that you have to, if you will, will the good of that person. Oh, okay. You want that person to receive good things in this life. Uh, you want him to be or her to be a good moral person. You want them to follow good examples. Um, you don't want them to go out and yield to temptation time after time I see. again. I see. Yeah. Hey, and, and so, uh, well, that, that's, that's very interesting. Um, j just out of curiosity, what is the one thing about confirmation that if there's anything you want to get across to your listening audience, it would be this. And I know there's about, because I asked you earlier, and you had a whole, <laughs> a whole bowl full. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the thing that I would like to get across is, like I said earlier, it, it's like somewhat equated to getting out of school and, and learning, but it's also to, to practice your faith in a more Christian type Attitude, yeah, yeah, attitude. Yeah. Uh, we all have bad days, and we will see that there are times when we're tempted to ignore somebody. Uh, that's when the strength of the Holy Spirit actually comes to us. It helps us to not ignore that person, to pay attention to what that person is doing, to what they're saying, and even to correct them if necessary. Um, they may be saying gossiping about somebody. I see. Uh, and we, you, you would say to them, well, that's not really the way you should be acting uh, towards that person. I see. I see. Huh. Well, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, there's a lot of uh, different, uh, you know, we're, we're sort of running uh, close to being out of time here, and I know that there's a lot of different things. Uh, I, I, of the different sacraments, um, I, you know, confirmation, I, I really never really fully appreciated mm -hmm. what it does. And so I, I thank you for sharing that information. Um, and I know that all of the other sacraments, let's see, there's, there's baptism. Baptism, 
confirmation, Holy Eucharist, then there's a two, two sacraments of healing, reconciliation and anointing. Okay. Then there's the two sacraments of service, marriage and holy orders. Okay, married. Right. And since you are a permanent deacon, permanent deacons are allowed to be married. If we are married prior to becoming a deacon, oh, okay. to be, prior okay. to being ordained a deacon, oh, okay. yes. So, so then can I safely assume if something should, God forbid, ever happen to your wife, could you marry again? Not without special permission from I the see. Pope. I see. But and there, there would have to be some extraordinary circumstances to that. I see. But typically we take a vow of celibacy oh, okay. that if our spouse should uh, predecease us, then we are to remain celibate. Oh, okay. And would that open up the, the doors of priesthood? Could you then become a priest? Um, it's possible, but again, that requires special permission. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, at my age, uh, probably not. <laughs> there's, there's several years of study for that. So, but you and I are just in our twenties here, <laughs> so you have you have a yeah. lot of. <laughs> uh, see, behind the the scenes, we have Sarah, and one of the things that uh, we asked Sarah to do was to make our hair real dark, get rid of all the wrinkles. Uh, make us sound young, and I'm, I'm quite sure she's done a fantastic <laughs> job. Of, <laughs> uh, uh, we, we call Sarah and Dwayne our magicians. Mm. You know, they make us look really good. Uh, we, we're running out of time. What is uh, what is the thing that you would like to share with the uh, listening audience that we haven't already discussed. And I, I know you've got four or five different sheets, et cetera. Yeah, I've got some notes. For yeah, uh, but what, one thing that you can share with the, with the listening audience. Okay. Confirmation is like baptism in, in one respect, in that it's a one-time deal. Once you're confirmed, you're never confirmed again. Uh, Holy Orders is the same way. Oh, okay. Once you receive the Holy Orders, you can you don't receive the Holy Orders again. Oh, okay. For example, I can't be reordained as oh, a deacon. Okay. Um, so it's un, it's not like Eucharist or um, reconciliation or anointing. You can receive those sacraments many times. You can receive the, the sacrament of Eucharist on a daily basis. Mm, okay. uh, anytime you're sick, you can receive the sacrament of anointing. And you can receive the sacrament of reconciliation on a daily basis also. But the, the sacrament of confirmation puts an indelible mark on a person's soul so, such that they have that strength has been, the strength of the Holy Spirit has been given to them and they know that they've received it. And from that point on, it's up to the person as to whether or not they take advantage of those graces that they have received. Much like temptations, you know, we all have the, the power, if you will, of free will. So we can choose to take advantage of the graces we've received, or we can choose not to. Hmm. Well, uh, words to live by. Uh, Deacon Terry, I, I really appreciate your being involved, and I, I look forward to our, our monthly show. Uh, uh, this is Inspirational Focus with uh, Deacon Terry Acox. I'm Patrick Dangle, and behind the scenes is, is Sarah. Uh, appreciate all of you tuning in, and have a great and blessed day.